every once in a while we get questions. Actually, pretty often we get questions. And I think every once in a while we are able to actually address those questions. Mm -hmm. So often folks that write in, as much as we want to just, the questions that we get are heart-wrenching. Yeah. A lot of them are very heart-wrenching. And we want so badly to be able to look th those couples in the eyes and say to them, what we think, you know, what we could find in scripture to encourage them with mm -hmm. the words of Christ, to exhort them in the things of God. But we don't have that option through this medium. And so we spend our time teaching and preparing and kind of for broader contexts. However, this, this question that came in has to do with uh, infidelity, has to do with um, forgiveness over a long span of time. And namely what had happened, I guess we can just share that on the other side. Um, but uh, yeah, our hope is by answering this gentleman's question it will encourage him um but will also encourage you and if you know someone in your immediate sphere mm -hmm. that could use these words of encouragement you could also take what you learn here and go encourage them so thank you for joining us and we'll see you on the other side Welcome back. My name is Ryan. This is my lovely wife, Selena. We are the Faces Voices founders of Fierce Marriage mm -hmm. and Fierce Parenting. If you haven't checked out the Fierce Parenting podcast, check that out. We have some fun conversations over there. That's much more of a let's walk alongside you in real time because we are still actively in the early stages of parenting. Mm -hmm. In fact, we are in the very early stages of oh, new share. parenting. Oh. Check Selena out. Look it out. Look, look got, at that. Got a little picture this morning. <laughs> we were at the doctor's this morning. And if you're listening to this, uh, Selena is having another baby. We are having another baby. We're having another baby. It's the final four yeah. right here. We'll have four total. And God is good and I am good. <laughs> that is. Maybe we should do a podcast episode on when do you know you've had enough kids? Yeah, because we kind of differ that. on that. We do. <laughs> That's Which is okay. why we have another one on the way. <laughs> Um, so we are thankful, and uh, so we're, we're happy to celebrate that with you. But on the Fierce Parenting side, we talk through the journey that is mm -hmm. parenting in real time. And you know what? Parenting is one of those things that there's as many methods as there are kids <laughs> when it comes to parenting. So we just try to point uh, parents to Christ. Yeah. So anyway, um, that's who we are. This is what we do. Thank you for joining us. Um, let's dive right into this. Um, I want to prepare, I think, the listener, too, that I think yeah. this is a – it's a little unique in what's happened, but – what is transpiring is are things that need to always be addressed in marriage. Um, rebuilding trust if trust has been broken. Mm. Uh, forgiveness. Uh, repenting of bitterness. You know, being honest with each other. Loving one another. And what does that mean when you are facing a battle? You're facing um, some really difficult and dark times. And so I, I think this will benefit anybody who listens. Um, but yes, especially if you have dealt with infidelity or you know someone who has, we just pray that this will be an encouragement uh, for you uh, specifically. Yeah, yeah, so thanks for that. Mm -hmm. um, we're just going to read it. It's actually quite a long note, but we want to do it justice. Mm -hmm. So this comes from a gentleman. Uh, his name is Mike. We're going to go ahead and read the whole body of what he wrote because I, I want to do it justice because I think it will it'll benefit just, us as we do the answers, yeah. okay? So it says, hello, and thank you for this podcast. It has really helped me become a better husband to my wife. We are high school sweethearts. Hey, yo, high five for that. <laughs> We're high school sweethearts. And got married very young, 22 and 23. Right before our wedding, we were going through a dark time. I was struggling with addiction and actually had to check into rehab. Around this time, my fiance at the time started having a relationship with somebody from work, which was uncovered about three weeks before our wedding when I had a relapse. At the time, she told me they never had sex, but kissed and that I was still the only man she had been with. I always felt there was more that went on than she told me, than what she told me, but never wanted to ask because I feared the answer would hurt too much. I gave her an ultimatum to quit her job and end it, or I was going to move on, because remember the affair was happening with somebody mm -hmm. at her job. She quit her job. We got married. We got involved in church and have had a good godly marriage for 11 years, rarely mentioning that dark period of time. I've always harbored a certain resentment toward my wife for what I feared she did right before our wedding, and in an effort to forgive and move on, I finally decided to ask her more about this relationship, and it was indeed more serious than she led on, and she did have sex with this person. Though I believed this the whole time, this new reality has been very painful to handle. I love my wife, and we've had an amazing life together, but the reality of what took place is very hard to deal with, and I find myself thinking about the details of what took place throughout the day. 
I've been very loving toward her and let her know that I forgive her because I do, and I was no saint at the time either, but it's hard for me to separate the lost person she was at the time from the godly person she is now. Will this get better with time? I need help. Mm-hmm. So you can hear the desire for this mm-hmm. husband to to move on, mm-hmm. like past this, but he's finding that he um, he's struggling. He can't mm-hmm. he can't seem to to get through it. And so I think maybe at the outset, the first thing I want to do is just acknowledge that, yeah, this is a very difficult thing. Yeah, absolutely. Can you imagine? Uh, I mean, let's try to put ourselves in Mike's shoes here. That you know we've been married going on nineteen years, right? And before we we got married, I said to you there was this thing, you know, I was right, with right. another woman. I think that would, yeah, that would overshadow, first of all, the wedding day, right? That would be a hard thing to kind of deal with. And they're not the first couple that we've heard something like this has happened. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I think I want to kind of pinpoint the struggle, too, is they've grown into a godly couple. Right. And so there's been a lot of growth and healing that has taken place, but now I'm wondering if the struggle is how do we live? Do we like, he, he doesn't want to ignore it, but how do you move forward with it? Like mm-hmm. in, with that knowledge yeah. um, and not just trying to ignore what happened and move on with life. But I, yeah. I applaud them for dealing with it yeah, and yeah. hitting it straight on because I, 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 there are a lot of couples that mm-hmm. are still kind of floundering in these things. Yeah. You're hitting it straight on. You're not going mm-hmm. around it. You're not avoiding it. You're not just kind of uh, hiding it away Which because you're afraid to look at it. Yeah, it but shows... instead you're walking in the light. And that, yes. that's what the encouragement we have for you first off is that, yeah, it's very difficult, but you're asking the right questions. Mm-hmm. It sounds like you guys are going through this in a healthy way. You're just struggling along the way. Yeah. And so Which is okay, praise God for that. Yeah. You are actually going through it and he is bringing you, he's going to bring you closer through that, which we have some encouragement to that effect later. Um, but I just want to highlight that you are asking these the right questions is you want to forgive and you, you say you have forgiven, mm-hmm. but you're still trying to, we want to know how does that actually work in your own heart? Right. When you're still thinking about right. it and you're, you're feeling the hurt and you're still having these triggering moments f- or mm-hmm. whatever. And by the way, this, uh, this applies to whatever forgiveness scenario you, you may right. be in. Your in your, you know, sometimes forgiveness is, is a decision we make before it's an emotion that we feel. Right. Right. And maybe that's something you're dealing with. You also are asking the question, Selena mentioned, this is how do we move past this? And mm-hmm. it's not how do we avoid it? How do we get around it? But how do we move past it um, and leave it behind us in a healthy way? Um, and then the final question that just was heart wrenching to me is, will this get better with time? Mm-hmm. That to me just feels, uh, I can feel you. I can you feel, feel, you can see them. Yeah. I can you see, see you. Despair. Yeah. And yeah. Because I know uh, that when endurance is hardest, especially when you're like, you feel like you've already been running a marathon and someone's asking you to get up and run another one immediately. And, and Right. And it sounds like it's pretty raw. And I think, you know, the goodness of God is that in the midst of the darkness and mm-hmm. in the midst of the struggle uh, is where he shines the brightest, where his love and his goodness yeah. is the richest and the fullest and the most experiential. And I think surreal uh, during those times. Amen. So to answer the question, I think we just go through a few yeah. of the lines that you used in mm-hmm. in the question and just encourage you and then maybe ask some challenging questions of you yeah. as well. So the first thing that I want to highlight is you said this, you said, I love my wife. Mm. And here's the encouragement for you is your love for your wife doesn't have to change because of this. And you probably know that in your head and we're just here to remind you and maybe hear, you know. Well, I think, I don't know about change. I think there's an opportunity for it to deepen, mm. to be honest. I mean, we've talked to many couples that have dealt with infidelity and they have said that their marriage feels uh, more strong, more stronger, Mm. (laughs) more strong. (laughs) It feels uh, more solid, more trustworthy. Not that you need to walk through something Mm -hmm. like that to get to those levels, but uh, the Lord has used it, I think, to unify them in a deeper way. So I think to, yeah, maybe emphasize that your love doesn't have to change, but have hope that it will it will deepen. Yeah. So you've heard us say this a thousand times, but we are called in marriage to love one another as Christ has loved mm-hmm. us. Well, that begs the question is how exactly does Christ love us? Okay. Mm-hmm. He died on the cross. He, he While we were gave still us, sinners. He gave us forgiveness. He brought brought us into the family of God. Yeah. But there's a do, there's a few doctrinal ideas that I think are really helpful here. And it's it's and I want to talk about the doctrine of the union with Christ and the doc, and, and communion with God. Okay. Hmm. So when we are in Christ, the Bible says you are a new creation. The old has passed away, the new has come, right? Mm-hmm. You were born again, right? That's an awesome thing, right? Right. right. Um, and that, that reality is done. Like that salvation mm-hmm. has been instantiated in 
the person and work of Christ, he brought you there and it's done. Like that's the union we have with Christ and that will never be broken, Mm -hmm. right? Nothing can snatch you out of God's hand once he has his grip on you. However, okay, and that's that sometimes is con- confused with communion with God. And so y- the idea of communion with God is you have this uh, relationship with God that is in many ways alive, right? You are yeah. you are learning to hear his voice, you're learning to obey him, you're learning to walk in step with the spirit. Mm-hmm. And yet we still fail at times. Yeah. And I think what many any believer will say this that it affects the relationship you have with God. Has God left you? Has he said, "All right, well that forgiveness I gave you" yeah. Uh, I'm going to take that back. Sorry, you're on your own now. Right. No, he never will I leave you, never will I forsake right. you. But the but we do feel a very real sense of yeah, something's our relationship is not what it should be. Right. Our communion right. has been damaged. And does God's love change for us in those moments? No. Uh Christ loves us even when we even in despite our sin. Yeah. Amen. Um and that when he forgave us, he had every one of our sins in view. Mm-hmm. Right? And it's just as we go out go about the life of living as Christ loves us and loving him back, we have to fight our flesh to be in communion with him. So there's an analogy there for uh, love between a husband and a wife, and that mm-hmm. my wife, I will always love you, right? And I will, and I, maybe the funny way to say this is I always love you, but I don't always like you. <laughs> Actually, I do always like you. It's just varying degrees. <laughs> um, but it, sometimes we need to, like, we need to work through a hard thing, and yeah. our love is unchanging because we've made that commitment to love one another. Right, we're living in the covenant. Right. But we're still having to work through some of that hard thing. So our communion, how we interact mm-hmm. may be affected a little bit more during that time. Yeah. So that's encouragement. Is your love can be deepened, as Selena was saying, and that, the, it, yet you're feeling the communion is, is damaged. And so now the process is getting back to that place of reconciliation right. and right. communion with one another. And the, I want to take a step back and just recognize that your wife has been honest with you. How, how easy would it have been? Now, I'm not saying that her heart wouldn't have been wrenched in this, but how easy would it have been? for her to say, no, and nothing happened. What I told you was, was true. Well, I, you know, and I, I guess I struggle a little bit because I'm, I'm, it sounds like he asked her again. She didn't volunteer the information. Right. However, and that's not when okay. She, yeah, yeah. However, and that's, I think where the pain, the pain pinpoint would be, right. Is that I asked you the first time and you didn't tell me the truth and I'm asking you again. And now you're telling me something like, that's that's going to mm-hmm. affect the communion. That's going to affect your relationship, yeah. and that's that's okay, and that's natural. You can't slough that it's off. It's natural for it to just, affect your communion. Yeah, yeah. Just saying. just face it and know that you know you are still a child of God. God has not left you. He has not forsaken you. You guys are both still made new in Christ, and and with that comes the ability to work through hard things to have that ability to forgive one another and to rebuild trust. You're not just going to be at that same level of trust again. Again, that's okay. Yeah. That's just the natural progression of when trust is broken. Yeah. Uh, the first step of healing any wound is you have to get the foreign object out of there, right? right. And this was dislodging that foreign yeah. object from your marriage, and now you can actually finally begin to heal. Yeah. And so uh, to echo what Selena says, this revelation it will only increase your love for your wife over time. With this caveat, you must see love the way God sees love. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, we'll talk about that a little bit further on, but hopefully that helps. Uh, the, the next thing I want to draw from what Mike said was, he said this, we had, we've had an amazing life together. Mm. And so the encouragement is here. You may need to hear this. Uh, this new knowledge does not invalidate your life up to this point. Mm, that's good. And while yes, there might be a tinge of all this whole time you've had this secret and mm. we've been intimate however many times Mm -hmm. and we've gone on vacations together and we've built a life together and I don't know if you have kids or not but if you've had kids together you're like it's all tainted by this like this cloud of you've been lying the entire time Mm -hmm. and I'm I'm, I just don't let that invalidate Mm -hmm. the life that you've built together because um I think that's a trap I think it will only lead you to darkness it will only lead you to bitterness right um and it will only lead you to distrusting your wife um, where you've said yourself that you love her and you've built this life together. And mm-hmm. not only that, you have a covenantal marriage that, mm-hmm. um, frankly, there's there's, you, not there's nowhere to go. Couple, yeah. And yeah. and so to, to buy that lie, I think, is to um, is to undercut like the healing process. Um, and so the encouragement there is just you will get through this mm-hmm. and you will have a more amazing life together, of course, God willing. Mm-hmm. But um, so... I just don't want that. I just don't want that amazing life to be like something of the past, or maybe it was a lie right. that I bought into no longer. Right. 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 Um, That's good. 
Okay, and so the, the next statement, and you said this, it's very hard to deal with, okay, and that is true. And yeah, I feel like that's an understatement. I just want to acknowledge that. Yes, that's, a very, that's a very true, and it's very hard. Um, like we said, you don't have to be okay right now. Um, healing and, you know, you said mm -hmm. taking out a foreign object. I think after that, there's this a cleansing that happens, right? Mm -hmm. and it can't feel good to have, you know, alcohol or iodine poured on an open wound, but it's necessary, right? There's got to mm -hmm. be that cleaning out. Um, and then there's the healing process of, you know, and the, the, the ultimate surgeon coming in yeah. and f not just like fixing it to make it okay, but like renewing it. And yeah. so I think we have, you have that hope that, yes, this is very hard. And some days maybe it feels like it's just going to break you both. Um, but remember who you can depend on. You don't have to depend mm -hmm. on your own strength and your own ability, but you can always depend on the Lord. And he is so faithful to show up, I think, in our weakest moments. Yeah. Um, and scripture is always the place you can go for encouragement. And we're going to have a lot of that just in a few moments. But to to kind of bring that analogy to a close is like the deeper the wound. Mm. So some of you know our story. I had have heart surgery in our, mm -hmm. before our second anniversary, I was under the knife, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty deep wound when they get in there and cut your heart open. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Sounds like a tragic the love deeper, song. And, and, and <laughs> this, uh, this is probably how you feel. Like yeah. you've had your heart splayed open. and Well, it takes time to recover. Like, well, that's the thing is the yeah. deeper the wound, the longer the recovery and the greater the intensity of care needed. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I couldn't even go up two stairs, mm -hmm. two or three, not a, not two flights of stairs, like two stairs, two because steps, my, yeah. my heart would just feel like it was about to explode. And, uh, but over time and lots of, lots of time, lots of healing, lots of care, mm -hmm. lots of patience. grace, lots of patience. My sweet bride was very patient with me. I was very angry at the Lord at that time in my life. Um, we made it through it and you can make it through this too, but just know that there's a direct, uh, there's a, uh, what's a direct correlation between mm -hmm. the depth of the wound and the length of the healing needed. Mm -hmm. All right. The, the last statement I wanted to draw out is I find myself thinking about the details mm -hmm. of what took place. Mm -hmm. And as a husband, I would hundred percent echo that this would be the hardest thing mm -hmm. because I I'm trying to picture as a wife. I would imagine that would be a hard thing if I, if I right. was in the husband's shoes and, and I'd be thinking like, where was I three weeks before we got married? I was here. And then you must've been, it must've been this day and this must've been this time. And you were with, and I know Swear what this person looks the, like. Yes, and I know, yes. And that would be immensely hard, um, but and it's understandable. But it cannot lead to a good place. Right. It won't lead to. A it good will place. not lead to a good place. So you just we need to stop that replay. Yeah. We need to exercise the self control because I think it's just a tactic of the enemy to just replay, replay, replay. Get that right. bitterness deep. Let's stir up those emotions and get you out of control. When God has the fruit of the spirit is self control and us saying, I read this somewhere, saying to our emotions submit to the cross like you you have no place here and uh when we're instructed in the bible to take captive every thought and make it obedient to christ um i think battles like that are are very difficult but it's okay to engage in them and i think that we need to mm. engage in them as if they are with sword and spear or whatever type of weapon like you need to right. take them actively captive that's good i want to read this passage um, um from psalm 103 mm -hmm. And uh, it was very encouraging to me as I read it. Psalm 103, starting in verse 7, he says, uh, verse 8, excuse me. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will he will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. Okay, that tells us about the nature of God's mm -hmm. forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Right, his, his anger, his, so his forgiveness is forever, but his anger is, is time bound. Mm. And it says, uh, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. Praise For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward mm. those who fear him. Get this, as far as the east is from the west, mm. so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Mm. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. I love that last part because it's like God remembers that like he could just ob obliterate us, mm -hmm. annihilate us, but he remembers our frame. He remembers that we are dust. And, mm. he, and, and, and this, as this passage would show us, he's moved to compassion. Yeah. And so uh, as far as the east is from the west, um, did God mull over the details of our sin against him? Mm. Does God do that? No. And does he know the depths of it more than we, right. we do? 
So yes, we're going to get to the the taking captive the the, the thoughts, but first let's look at how God thinks about us mm. in terms of our sin. Mm. He does not mull over our, the details of our sin. As far as the east is from the west, mm-hmm. how far is the east from the west, and Selena? Keeps, it, it's an yeah. infinite distance. And he doesn't deal with us in the right. according to our sins. I mean, look at the Old Testament and right. the laws that were in place for sins. I mean, God is his grace is so abounding <laughs> and yeah. his mercy. Yeah, amen. And so that's let, let that be our, our calibrating yeah. spot. And then let's mm-hmm. get into how God forgives us in this way, and we should too. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the passage that you were talking about, this first Corinthians. Uh, 10. Mm. Let me read that, starting in verse 3, though, because it's just so profound. For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take captive, take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. And then verse 7 says, look at what is before your eyes. If anyone is confident that he is Christ, let him remind himself that just as he is Christ's, so also are we. Mm. So here's Paul is, the headline here is Paul is defending his ministry. Mm-hmm. So this is not a passage about, hey, if, you've, if your spouse has cheated on you in a distant past, here's how to get over it. But it gives us some principles for how to deal with arguments that would position themselves against what we know to be true. Right. And in this case, we know to be true that uh, God has forgiven us, mm-hmm. that we are called to forgive one another, and that dwelling on these things is not going to bear good fruit in our lives. Right. Um, and that actually looks, for that, let's look to Philippians 4, uh, starting in, uh, what verse do we want to start in? Um, verse 4. So Philippians 4, 4. It says this, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say it. Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's another passage in there. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay, so finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Mm-hmm. So notice how he says, guard your hearts mm-hmm. and your minds. Do not be anxious and everything. Instead, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God and focus on these things, the excellent things. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll be honest, sometimes this passage rubs me the wrong way because it, it, it seems to me like you're just faking it till you make it, right? Like right. don't deal but with you the can, hard no. thing. No, yeah, I know. I know, but, but I think sometimes you can I want to read it that way and I know that's not what Paul's saying. I but. think you can replace and like reorder some of those thoughts, right? Instead of swirling around in, mm. you know, what you think happened you know, you can replace those thoughts. Okay, well, what is, so how can I guard my mind and my heart in Christ Jesus? Well, Christ said that I'm forgiven. Okay, so, but if I'm forgiven, I'm also called as a believer to extend that forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And how can I extend that forgiveness? By the power of Christ that lives in us, the same power, the Bible says, that raised Christ from the dead. And that is power. Like, that is power, power to forgive. And then we are then marked as believers, by how we love one another, forgiving someone of infidelity, huge mark of love I, in my book, right? Like forgiveness and working that out yeah. is a huge sign to an outsider, someone who maybe is not a believer, and saying, how could you forgive? How could you work through that? Truly, it's by the grace and glory of God and his mercy. That's a great uh, time to share this quote. Thomas Watson said this, is, we need not climb into heaven to see whether our sins are forgiven. <laughs> Let us look into our hearts and see if we can forgive others. Mm -hmm. If we can, we need not doubt, but God has forgiven us. Mm -hmm. So what what he's getting at, and Thomas Watson is not saying that in order to be forgiven by God, you need to forgive others. What he's saying is that if you forgive others, that is such a profound act when it's rooted in the gospel that it is very clear evidence that God has already captured your heart. Right. That you understand what the depths of what the Lord has done in your own life and in your own heart. Right. And because we can't, forgive if we've never experienced it. Mm. I um, was looking up passages on grace and forgiveness because like... <laughs> that was a long list. <laughs> extremely long. And, and and so I just had to... Uh, I compiled a few here, but let's. I just want to read a few. So, yet God in his grace... This is Romans 3.24. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our mm. sins. Um, Ephesians 1, 6-7. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the Beloved. Mm. Like, 
To be accepted by the holy God of the universe is through his glory, to the, to the praise of the glory. Us, uh, dust. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, Titus 2.11, for the grace of God has been revealed, bringing salvation to all people, again, by grace. Um, and this list goes on and on. And I mean, I don't want to gloss you over this. but one that I thought was really good. I think maybe you want to read it. It's Titus 3.7, because of his grace, he made us right in his sight and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. Amen. Right, he made us right, and then he gave us confidence mm. in this. And so maybe in this in this moment, it's recognizing, okay, that I have been made right, and now I have confidence in Christ. And the only way we can see that rightly is, A, by the illum- illumination of the Holy Spirit, right? He has to work yeah. in our hearts mm-hmm. um, through his word, through seeing our sin for what it is, and then mm-hmm. seeing God's holiness for what it is, seeing this massive gap between the two, and then yeah. seeing Christ fill the gap. Yeah, That's grace, and that's a revelation of a holy our holy God, you have yeah. saved me. Yeah. And so that revelation then will turn us into forgivers, to be serial forgivers, <laughs> to look at our spouse and say, "How God has not held my sin against me. How could I possibly hold your sin against you? Mm-hmm. And, I, I, and Mike, hear us. I feel like you've done that, but you're still working through mm-hmm. what that looks like. Yeah. And just because you forgive someone doesn't mean that automatically you trust them. Right. You're not just right back where you were before this, mm-hmm. right? Because you still do have to deal with the fact that there were years where you were, there was a lie of a mission happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so pragmatically speaking, you have a few options. And I think I know which one you're going to take, but the first <laughs> option is to continue to harbor unforgiveness, though you've said you've forgiven her, just to continue to kind of not actually walk out that forgiveness, yeah. right? And that will only crush you. It will embitter you and it will poison your marriage. Right. And not only you. that, it'll crush your wife. Yeah. Um, and I can't imagine Christ wanting to crush his bride. Hmm. Right? He, he instead will, will build up his bride. Yeah. That's the first option. Yeah. Continue down the path of, of not to continue, but I'm saying take the path of bitterness. I don't think you're on that path, Mike, by the way. And the second path is this. You have forgiven her, but you just need time to heal. Hmm. You need time to be reconciled. And you need time to rebuild your trust. Right. And that's the best path, best path forward. Um, but here's the caveat is it, don't expect it to be fast. Don't expect it to be simple. And that, right. in other words, you can just kind of identify exactly what has to, has to happen. Right. And the third thing is don't, don't expect it to be easy. Yeah. And I think that it's important to recognize, like, obviously, don't do this alone. Get some community, right. Christian community around you, um, Bible-believing counselors, pastors, um, to help you both walk through and get to the other side of this healing and whole and unified uh the second uh i think stepping onto that path of healing it's one of those things that you just kind of look down and you ask the lord what the next step is and you continue and you continue and continue and over time you can take that look back and say wow look where the lord has brought us but you can't just take a small step and then look behind and be like oh, we haven't gotten that far right it's just That's one good. of those things that you just got to kind of methodically go once one foot in front of the other and just trust that you're you're going where the lord is leading you are extending the grace and forgiveness that you should be extending not by your own ability but remember because you've been forgiven it's coming from a place of already being forgiven right and being loved and being secure and so um that matters motivation matters cling to christ fix your eyes on him and uh and and keep walking toward him together yeah and don't do that alone just you and her right get some people around you to to pray with you to be known by them so that you can walk uh more steadfastly Uh, and so if you're watching this you made it to the end you're awesome. And if you made it to the end and you are wondering that this forgiveness sounds otherworldly, and I'm here to tell you that it is, mm-hmm. that it is, it is not from this world. It is from the God of the universe who has became flesh. He lived among us, dwelled among us, mm-hmm. died for us, yeah. was risen again to defeat sin, to defeat death, and now reigns, is ascended, ascended into heaven and mm-hmm. reigns at the right hand of the Father, and that you are being called into relationship with him to be forgiven by him so that you can experience the forgiveness we're talking about but then get this live it out yeah. in your own life Amen. i can say that without christ we would be divorced 10 times over because i would be a, a degenerate <laughs> worthless man christ has brought me out of the mire plucked me out of the fray of eternity and said that one is mine and he's done mm-hmm. that with my wife Same. and our marriage yeah. is vastly different because of it so we have a website set up for you, thenewsisgood.com. Check that out. It shows you what it looks like to become a Christian and give you some steps forward in that regard. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your forgiveness, your matchless grace in our lives. I thank you for 
the ability that you've given us and the call that you've given us mm-hmm. and, and the challenge you've given us to forgive one another. Lord, I pray that you would um, empower Mike to forgive mm-hmm. in profound ways, maybe that he hasn't realized yet. And I pray that you help them walk out reconciliation and tr- rebuilding that trust wisely. Mm-hmm. I pray for any couple watching this or listening to this that has dealt with infidelity or maybe is uh, currently dealing with it or maybe there's a, a hidden sin or infidelity mm-hmm. in their marriage that they know in their guts it needs to be brought to light so that they can heal, so they can move forward. I pray, Holy Spirit, you would direct their steps, yeah. convict them lovingly, draw them out of the darkness into the light mm-hmm. so that they can walk in fellowship with you, fellowship with one another, mm-hmm. being cleansed from all unrighteousness. Mm-hmm. In your precious name, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you so much for watching the Fierce Marriage podcast uh, or listening, if you're listening. <laughs> um, if you made it this far, again, you're awesome. But also, you may want to partner with us. This ministry uh, is only possible because of our rock, solid, the bedrock of our patrons. Amen. If you want to be a part of those that small, tight-knit community, go to this website. Go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner. You'll see some details there. As an added bonus, you'll get some access to mm-hmm. courses. You'll get access to books. Depends on the tier. <laughs> you might even get some of these fancy wedding rings. Oh, yeah. We have uh, <laughs> silicone wedding rings of our own design, of our own making. Yeah. And I won't get into those, but I think they're the best silicone okay. wedding rings on the market. They really are. Anyway, go to fiercemarriage.com slash partner, mm-hmm. and uh, we would love to meet you in there. But I guess that's it for now. So this episode of Fierce Marriages. Here we can. We'll see you again in seven days. Until next time. Stay fierce. Stay fierce.